the muse, baby. Molly Campsey, you are my muse today. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I honestly, I just wanted to meet you because I feel like we've needed to meet for a while. We're like online friends. Well, we said when I came in that I have actually met you before. Oh yeah, tell me the no, story. I, I, haven't, I haven't met you, but you were on like a kind of like a tequila party at Soho Farmhouse. Wait, what? <laughs> With like some friends and you're all in your robes. This is so creepy. Oh my God, I even no know this. <laughs> What I was talking about. So you were that. I feel really cringe, but I'm crying. I just like I had I had followed you for so long, and I genuinely I thought I thought Chloe grew up in Buckinghamshire because I had followed you on MySpace. Genuinely, wait, like, what? I, followed you, I think I followed you for a seriously long joking? time. That is crazy. I you were, like, the most beautiful model. Oh my god, I ever. love you. Um, MySpace. Yes, I'm dead. I, I I really do think, but I'll try and log back in and then confirm. Please after do. This. That's mental um, so yeah I went past you but you didn't know who I was but I knew one of the friends Tessa yeah. who yes. was on the trip mm -hmm. um, and I think she even said like oh come to the cabin we can have some tequila together and I was like not my bad wait I love how you so call it sorry. tequila party that's so funny <laughs> but do you know what do you know the one I'm talking yes. about okay. so we were there because my friend split up with his boyfriend yeah so he had he was meant to be going with a group and he's of his your best friend yes right? so he's yeah. meant to be going on like a group trip with them so instead I was like I'll go instead yeah. and then we invited my other friends Tessa and Sophie because they were were they newly single something like that yeah. so I was like guys let's have tequila a great party. time we're gonna celebrate it doesn't matter that you've split up and yeah and some of my friends were like shotting the tequila and throwing it over their shoulders I remember into the Soho farmhouse river yeah it's um, not sustainable it's not gonna be recommended don't but. recommend but it's probably 90% tequila at this point that's so funny I know isn't it but I went past you and um, Wait, where were we why were we in robes I think your pictures were in robes because I would have yes. seen Tessa's stories afterwards. Yes. Poor Tessa, like I'm, tr I'm being very mindful of not saying anyone's name oh, as no. well. We love you, Tessa. Being filtered. Tessa's the best. That's so funny. I know. That's so, crazy. Yeah, we, we, I've known of you for like years and years and years. Wait, MySpace was like, we were children. We I were know. babies. I know. Bring it back. And I, are we the same age? How old are you? 32. I'm 32 next week. I'll be 32 oh, when this goes out. So yeah. So, oh, you're the school year below me then. I'm 92. I'm 92 as well. Okay. But yeah. But yeah. What you? What month were you born? March. So September. Okay. You'll be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd have been the year me. above. Yeah, My yeah. husband's the year above me as well. Mm. I love being like I'm so much younger than you, even you're three I, months I, older than me. I play the same game as well. <laughs> I'm like I'm so young. Um, so I wanted you on because I feel like you have like skyrocketed recently. You've done so well, okay. and. The muse is all about that. Like, I want to get people on that maybe we follow and we feel like we know them, but I want to get them on and really know the truth, how you really feel about it all. Mm. And because you give me, like, you seem so confident. Have you always been this way? I get that a lot, and it's really kind. Yeah. I Hopefully, I'm not confident in a really loud, no. rash No, I mean, it's like a quiet, lovely confidence that I think yeah. women aspire to have. Thank and that's you. one of the reasons people are drawn to you, I think. Yeah, I, I definitely am really confident. Um, I have my things that I've been working on where I haven't been so confident. And um, I was thinking of them in, on the way on the cab on, on the way here, actually just like learning to say no is my new thing. Mm -hmm. That's actually something I'm not really confident with. Um, or in the past, I've been quite confident with my no, but not necessarily competent. So I maybe don't say it in the right way, the best way. Um, but I had a little moment yesterday where I said no, and I feel like I said it in the right way. And I was like, cool, progress, really proud of myself. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I would say I am quite confident. Um, an amalgamation of things have gone into that I had a very um I have a, a history with rejection um which I think has really helped my confidence mm -hmm. so and I'm sure we'll go into it but like modeling dating and teddy sales weirdly mm -hmm. um three kind of pillars of my life in my 20s like my tumultuous 20s when I all I knew was like rejection and kind of picking myself back up, being confident with it again and going forward. And I feel like as I've got older, like late 20s, early 30s now, and with my career having grown, I'm at a place of a lot more calm and I can look back on it now and I know that all the kind of hardships in my 20s and sort of late teens as well have brought me to a place where 
I am confident. But mm-hmm. then there's also this game I like to play with myself where I think if something is scary and you feel that immediate lack of confidence, I play the other route. So let's say like coming here today could make me nervous or anxious and wondering if I have the confidence to be on a podcast. But then you go, okay, well, don't go and say no to the opportunity, say no to all the things that could happen Mm -hmm. after that. And you don't know what you're saying no to and what could come from it. Absolutely. So you can kind of, I play that game in my head and that will often give me the confidence when something's a little bit scary. And I think That's missing such good out. good advice. Yeah, I like it. It's mm, always worked for that's me. That's so helpful. Um, but yeah, go, go down the other route and it's not great. It's, you know, very close, not kind of close-minded, but it's... Yeah, it's you're closing yourself off to opportunities, yeah. experiences, you never know what could happen. Yeah, and then the next opportunity will come along and you'll already be in the pattern of closing yourself off and saying no Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So things will just get smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas if you just go, okay, let's try this one and Mm -hmm. let's just do it and fake it and whatever. Absolutely. Then next time you have a case study in the past where you felt this way, but it did work out. And so then you'll go back to that and you'll just keep on growing on that. It was a really long answer. It's a really analytical way of looking at things, but I love it. I'd say I'm analytical as a person. Yeah, no, but the... That's great. You're data driven. Yeah. With like life. <laughs> I really am. It's yeah. amazing. But it's amazing that you can get that from that small amount that I've said. Because- yeah, but I love that because I'm quite like that in that I I feel like sometimes I think into things too much, but it's not too much. For me it's exactly how I live my life, but yeah. more than other people. But yeah. It works. It does work. I say. Yeah. yeah. Um, taking you back to modeling because you were a model. Tell me all about it. Now you've said rejection, all this. Obviously, yeah. I've lived that life too, and I it's know. a crazy world. Crazy world out there. Tell me about it. How did you start? Yeah, I'm keen to learn if yours was. I imagine it was really different because I was obviously a plus size model from the age of maybe 19, 20. Mm -hmm. I finished uni and I went straight into modeling. Wasn't earning enough money. So that's when I started uh, doing telesales, obviously, because that's what you do. (laughs) I then started running the call center because I was so good. Stop. Of course you were. But then I did it. I I did the um, telesales for like eight years or something, like a really long time. Do you think that's helped you now with selling on social media yeah 100 percent. so interesting again it's the weird it's quite cosmic because you look forward and I never knew what I wanted to do as a job but I feel like I am in the most perfect job now absolutely and it's this it's an amalgamation of both of those things yeah yes it's it's the modeling it's selling talking obviously a lot of the time as well and even I don't know if you do this and it's probably quite sad but I will literally turn my little flat into a bit of a set yeah it's like hair and makeup and it's and then you'll have a lunch break and it like it follows the pattern of being on a shoot so much oh it does so much but you just have but you're your own boss yeah good and a bad thing yeah um but this is i'm really bad at going off on tangents and not answering no i love the it original question. no i love this it's great i do that too that's why it's so hard being a podcast host because i'm like i just want to chat just go with the flow. absolute shit for hours um, um but yeah modeling modeling modeling, modeling. so I did that for about um so what was i yeah 20 till probably about 28. why did you get into it in the first place so I thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool back then. Yeah. It was like the thing to do. Now I feel like it's not really a thing. It's social media now. It's, yeah, it's, they're the same thing almost. Like modeling just doesn't pay as well. No, it pays nothing now. That's, <laughs> no. part, that's the problem. Yeah. There's nothing to aspire to in the modeling world where back then it was like, I want to be like the Victoria's Secret models or like yeah. Cara Delevingne or it was that era, yeah. wasn't it? Where now it's like... I loved the VS the Nepo models babies. so much and no. I still do. Icons. And Candice. I saw Candice when I was in, the one time I was in New York. Queen Candice. She, yeah, she's my favorite. She your fave. Same. She's yeah, so obviously. good, isn't she? Um, and I know they're not great from a body positivity, no. diversity mm-hmm. angle, but I appreciate them on their little island for what they are. It, yeah. I don't think we always need to be pushing As human the body beings. positive narrative. Yeah, I, they're great to look at. I always found them inspiring. Um, so I'd literally practice like catwalks in my room and stuff and just wanted to be a VS model. Was obviously never have the body for it. So I was like, but I, I, so as at uni, I put on weight um, and then essentially just monetized the weight gain, which I feel like is very I entrepreneurial. Yeah. And 
Um, With the modeling, I just approached some reputable agents. I love that, so you reached out to them? Yeah. Love. A bit of a red flag in itself, like I was obviously never going to make it as a model because no one had actually ever approached me. Don't be silly. I did that too. Like I'd been scouted when I was really young, but I was super young. And then when I was like, okay, I want to give it a go. It seems cool. Yeah. I then reached out and was like, I want to be with this agency. I'm going to reach out to them and make it happen. So, Were you with Storm? Yes. How do I know this? You followed me since MySpace. Yeah, and apparently <laughs> I messaged you saying I had a dream about you. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Did, it wasn't that long this? ago. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to get it up, guys. Can you not? Can, Molly, sorry, can we cut? <laughs> can we cut? You did. It wasn't that long ago. Right, we'll come back to that later. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead. Let's continue. focus on the question. Continue on the um, question. Yeah, yeah, reached out to some models and got signed straight away. Amazing. Um, also had a stint of modelling in Paris. Like, it's all very... But it just feels like a fever dream now. I... Yeah, I was modeling for like seven years or something, somewhat. It's a long time. Unsuccessfully, yeah. It, Why was it unsuccessfully, do you feel? Because um, seven years sounds successful to me, like that's a long time. I couldn't have done it without telesales there as well. Mm. So it's I like was- more of a side hustle. Yeah, both 100%. Of them were. Yeah. But I think modeling was so cool. I made it look like I was super successful and I just- Online. I wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the kind of the full circle moment is that I needed to grow my account in order to book more jobs because social was becoming a bit more of a thing and some girls were getting booked because they had a following. So I was urged to do that by my agent at the time. And I did that and it, yeah, changed my life from about, I think I maybe met my social manager when I had 75,000 followers, something like that. Mm -hmm. But that was off the back of, again, we were talking about like confidence moments and saying yes to things. And I had my kind of big break moment. I always thought that, is that what it's called? A big break moment? Yeah. Big, big break. Big break. Yeah. I had my big break with yeah. Grace Beverly's um, Tala launch. Mm -hmm. So again, something that, a sliding doors moment where it could easily not have happened and said yes to the job and then I was there for the day shooting met Grace for the first time I wasn't really aware of her as like a fitness influencer before that but I'd said to my ma uh, my modeling agent I was like I think this is going to be a really big deal I, I want to do the job yeah and because I did that my manager who I have today saw me on that campaign and wow. I had about 70,000 and she really took a shot on me her name's mm -hmm. Sarah and she's actually leaving me oh, this no. month so I I have like a, I, I'm at an agency and mm -hmm. so I you know you're she, insanity yes yeah. um who are just like I cry when I talk about them because they are oh, so good and oh she's God, so that. wonderful. Yeah, mm. that I don't know anyone who's so lucky to find a manager I know. from that from the beginning. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, like that's so rare. I know, and I know that through modeling as mm. well. Like I have had some questionable representation in the past. So to me, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> not naming any. Names. Jesus Christ. Um, but they're all lessons learned. Yes. And the me today, who's thirty-two, can say no to stuff mm -hmm. because I have a barometer for what is right and wrong only from doing the wrong stuff before or Absolutely. having had the wrong advice um so yeah modeling led me to this totally by accident and I'm so same. grateful really yeah exact exact same in the way that I sort of well I started posting like behind the scenes of modeling yeah just naturally and like outfits and the makeup artist and the makeup they did on me and just you were just sharing your life back then for no reason really weren't you with a stupid filter on it yeah so did I was you posting get questions about that because if I start to do that people would be like Oh, so are you uh, an influencer? Like when it was really... So this was before, this was before an influencer was a job. Yeah. Like it was like the beginning when you'd put the weird filter and the weird little frame on the photo and you'd post yeah. it out. So then it started becoming a thing and I had some followers and my agency were like, this is the future apparently. So suddenly we're going to take more of a shine to you. Whereas previously they were just putting me Ooh. in like the commercial category, putting me in a box, making me do jobs that like I didn't mind doing, but I wanted to do more. Yeah. And then as soon as I had followers they were like oh we're gonna look at you more now and I got to go to events yeah and like got suddenly would glam. and then got to do jobs on Instagram as well as the campaign and I was like this is sick like, I get to be my own person and put out pictures of myself that I actually like like yeah. not just ones on the portfolio 100% how did you deal with like um not liking your hair and makeup because that's oh a really gosh. strong memory for me I hated it <laughs> you need to look <laughs> in the mirror and be like who am but I think so you, I at the towards the end I wouldn't look in the mirror 
yeah because I, I knew too. how much it would affect my confidence um but I th- feel like every model talks about the fact they'd carry around a little bag and kind of make their own tweaks I wouldn't I was always so afraid Did of getting told off no I or offending did. like the makeup no artist. sometimes they found out yeah. I, I also you know I really I love makeup artists I appreciate their craft but sometimes if it especially if it's something that sort of was a big thing mm. and you want to feel and look your best mm. and they made you look really bad and they just have so it's like I'm sorry I have to I'm gonna have to just a little few tweaks yeah, yeah. and then one time she was like have you added makeup and I was like no oh, no <laughs> it's obvious that I had yeah but it did look better so it is what it is really because you and you feel better oh a thousand times better and it just changes the way you move your confidence yeah. like I, I felt like a shell of myself when they make you look what well, like I'm like I look better when I walked in with like my hair up and like no makeup on yeah yeah like, it would be that bad we just look like a joke sometimes a joke yeah and how is it we're possible? trying to sell products here you're d- are they taking the mick out of us? <laughs> it was crazy. And yeah. I was like, okay, this is wild. Um, do you have any like other crazy stories with modeling? Like any awful stories, anything that you look back on and go, wow, that was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> do you swear on this? Are you yeah, we can swear. swear. <laughs> Although my grand listens, Pissed sorry, off. gran. <laughs> um, I, I really don't have that many crazy stories. And I think this is like a straight size thing. I think you would have got it a lot more than plus. Mm. And also there weren't many of us. There was maybe like 15 girls really working a lot regularly. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think, or maybe some things would feel bizarre to people listening where they felt normal to us. Like I'm so comfortable being naked um, around, watch out Connor. (laughs) <laughs> watch people. out videographer she's gonna be getting a kit off in a second kind of um, scared and then and, and how that kind of fed into body confidence a little bit or body neutrality i prefer to say mm. um just because we were naked all the time in front of people oh you had know. to be didn't you yeah it and, and it's like the nude shoots are cool but when the camera goes off there is a moment where you are just standing there <laughs> like, hey. i have some pictures that my and I I hope they are just like totally wiped from the internet but my sisters stop breathing when they see them because they think they're so (laughs) hilarious and they are nudes but I'm just wearing sleeves (laughs) you know I was just Uh. I think I really grinded I really really worked hard and and you have to do and when you start modeling like you feel so lucky to be there and you feel like you're I mean unless you've got loads of confidence you sort of feel like oh imposter syndrome like mm. someone's gonna find me out I'm not good enough to be it this is amazing oh my mm. god I'm a model and it was the biggest thing to be back then yeah so you did kind of do any anything I was talking about my yeah. friend Sophie was on the podcast and she was like you know you thought I met well, her in a lift did you yeah yeah oh no I think she told me this yeah. I, think I said that you were coming on and she said she you cute you know all my friends I do <laughs> she was like um Kate, you know, you think Kate Moss used to get naked and do this. Like, it's cool. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. But then you'd be with photographers and makeup artists that are not Kate Moss's. Yeah. And it just wouldn't look the same. I know. I know. Uh. Um, yeah, some wild pics. But no crazy stories. I know there are things like some girls would use padding to make themselves appear bigger. Mm. And another confidence thing was, which I actually never did. I was never asked to do, to be fair. It was quite a nice a fairly nice industry the plus size yeah. side of it that's so um, interesting it re- uh, yeah and I think it's really different and all I hear from straight size is that you're told to lose weight whereas when I was plus I think everyone was quite careful about not actually asking me to put on weight but I would get rejected a lot because I was too slim mm. um so my whole life well, seven eight years I've been told that I'm too slim mm-hmm. so now I'm going around thinking that I'm like a size 10 which I am not um but then I like post on TikTok sometimes and because I talk about my size a lot especially if I know I'm going to reach a new audience I'll yeah. say size 18 which I'm a size 18 like through and through and mm-hmm. everything that I wear but I think some people think it's like clickbait it's all that I'm lying for views and lying about my size um but I, I think I'm really tall and I, it's just the proportions and I carry my weight in a certain way. It's not just your size, it's also your shape. And I think maybe I have a particular shape. People are strange though, aren't they? The way they want to comment on every single detail that you put out on social media. So yeah. when you then start doing social media, when's the moment been where you're like, it's clicked, it's, it's happening. Happened. Yes. I made it. What was your moment? Almost like my made it moment, my made it chapter felt like it was starting with uh, my first few jobs of insanity mm-hmm. because the rates were about 10x my modeling rates. And I thought, 
oh, this is beginner's luck. Like, this isn't going to continue. Um, it did continue, and it was just a different industry. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so lucky that I did that Tala campaign. I'm lucky that I met Sarah. And then I'm lucky that Insanity have continued to work with me. And hopefully I've kind of shown that through my work ethic and the way I speak about them and the way I treat the people that work there and all that sort of stuff. Um, But yeah, that was definitely like, what is going on? And it's continued. And I feel like one of the really great things about the industry is that you don't know when the music's going to stop. And so I need to keep on going and keep on kind of. Do you get um, scared about that? Not really scared because Mm. I want to be able to look back and be like, I gave it the best shot for that period of time that lasted Mm -hmm. same with my manager leaving I'm like I'm not gutted she's leaving I'm grateful I had her for are you not gonna follow her is she not going into another she's moving um like she's moving country oh okay yeah she's going to (laughs) Canada so oh wow um she's just starting a whole new chapter and Mm. so um I've got a new manager who I'm really excited to start working with who I've like followed for ages I have a new manager now who's starting and so it'll be the first time in I guess yeah four years so I have no idea how it's going to go but I'm hopeful and I have loads of processes I work in a very very particular way tell me about this I can't I need to sell it it's too good (laughs) she's gonna put it into an Uh, e-doc there is there is honestly too much to go through but the the kind of the overview this is why I wanted you on because you're I can just tell you take it you see it as a business which it absolutely is but you're taking it so you're doing it so well and like properly and this is so refreshing and interesting please tell me more well, I'm just worried that someone who's 16 on TikTok is going to catch up with me and fair enough because they are they work harder they're cheaper than I am like no, I love that you're saying that and so I need to I, I they keep me on my toes mm. um but yeah there are just there's almost too much stuff to go into. I, I loved your solo app, which I think went into a lot of it and I think gives people an insight oh, into you. how much there is, especially because you're self-managed, right? Which Yeah, well, I've just got a manager. I've had it for like a week. Okay. So we shall see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Give it three months and see how it is. Yeah, I'm excited to just like let, like, let it go a bit because it's too much. Yeah. It's so much work. And, anything, and I can focus a bit more on my own things. Yeah, it, like any time taken away from you shooting in this capacity or another one is, in my opinion, wasted. Like mm-hmm. contracts, emailing people, all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, and I'd sit and do it and it would take me days and then I'd not create any content. And this is like this year, I feel like I've just been not creating content and sort of lost my way with it and just yeah. been too focused on getting myself work and stuff. And it's like, no, no, no. I yeah. need to just let someone else do this and then I'll thrive. I'm very agency centric though. I know a lot of creators, mainly women when I talk about creators who uh, run their own business as well. But I just, I I like having my head above the clouds. Yeah. And um, no, it's amazing because then you can focus on the job at hand, which is creating content for your audience. And yeah, I'm excited to get back into that. Yay. Yay. You just need to be in front of the camera like 100% of the time. Uh, Do you, are you in front of the camera 100% of the time? Do you film like everything? I'm lazy. I you do and, not seem lazy. I try and free up my time as much as possible. And I, yeah, I, I was going to ask you about boundaries. Like how do you set boundaries with content creation? So my other half, he had a role at Google essentially doing lots of strategy. And he's a very wow productive, optimizing time kind of person. Great person to have as a partner. He's an insane. And it was like date five. And I kind of realized that this was happening, like who he was. And I was like, this is interesting. That's not Perfect. the reason we're together. No, but you probably bounce off each other so well. Yeah, and he knows my business insanely well. Um, he's taking an unpaid role in the business at the moment. <laughs> Love. <laughs> but we just do strategy and I learn so much from him. And um, I really think he needs to hire himself out for like a few grand a day to influencers because yeah. the way he's grown my business is insane. That with insanity as well. like. I think a lot of the strategy has actually come from me and my other half. And so I've been there to implement that and learn and iterate as we go. And that's incredible. It, on, there is so, 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 so much stuff um, that has made my life better. And part of that as well is I really think having being an influencer is it being a lifestyle business. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time we've been approached to do other ventures, whether it's like makeup, clothing, podcast, book, like whatever it is. Mm. And I am having too much of a good time with social and it's too much of a lifestyle business that 
other ventures can't really compete. I've got my focus on one thing that's working really well mm. and there's no reason to change that right now. Yeah, because it's working. Yeah, it will change at some point. Um, and I'll need to kind of explore other avenues and if I really want to, but social is just the best and it allows yeah. for the best lifestyle as well. Mm -hmm. Like I say lazy is kind of a joke, but I really think my downtime is very important. Same. Um, and maybe it's something as you get older a little bit more, but I think also on the come up with modeling and creating, you say yes to every single event. Yeah, in your twenties, you have so much casting. energy. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. 30s, it's like, okay, I just want to go home and watch Netflix. Like, how can I make this happen and yeah. have my own hours in certain places? And yeah. that's the great thing about this job. I know. But I, I can see, being on the outside looking in, how people would think it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Or we get paid for taking selfies kind of things. Yeah. I'm going to so many people think that. Yeah, I wish. Um, Me too. But yeah, and it's... We used to do when it first started. It used to be so easy. You'd put up a photo, everyone would see it lovely now it's a bit more of a grind now a lot more of a grind you know everyone talks about like my favorite um you know mr beast um yes. he has a quote about the algorithm and it's just my favorite which i think i always um try and incorporate like when i think about my content which is it's stop saying the algorithm doesn't like your content and start saying your audience doesn't like the content mm -hmm. because they are interchangeable. And actually, it's my responsibility to make sure that my content is valuable and keeps people there and all that kind of stuff. I have 100% control over how well something does or doesn't do, and I don't yeah. want to blame it on some kind of external force. I don't know how I got onto that. No, but that's a good way of thinking about things because it's gonna keep you accountable and keep you going. Yeah. Because if you sit and blame something outside, and this applies to anything in life, you, if you blame something else, you can just sit and blame that and be the victim. 100%. Whereas if you always say, actually, no, it's something I can change, then you're, you're gonna keep moving forward. Yeah. I it love works. that. It really Mis works. Mr. Beast, words <laughs> of wisdom. <laughs> but I think he's great. There are so many people outside of the fashion space that I draw inspiration from. Mm -hmm. And those kind of techie people, the YouTubers, I do feel like they have a lot of knowledge to share yeah wait i'm obsessed with you you have so much to say okay wait what can i ask her guys <laughs> so when you're talking about your husband and how he's helped your business in what ways he's not my husband i'm oh, not husband sorry but um your partner. we call each other husband and wife like <laughs> you? privately yeah oh, yeah I love yeah that. it's just i think we're gonna do our own thing yeah i'm 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 actually quite um anti not anti marriage I don't anti -marriage. know why I said husband I just I think it's because I've got I just a husband call him I'm my just partner but then it sounds like I'm a lesbian <laughs> oh my god I call Josh I don't I don't even say husband because I feel like it sounds too old and like it just makes me feel like I'm like 40 odd yeah. I'm like no my partner yeah. yeah they can think we're lesbians it's fine yeah 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 um what were we saying about him what advice has he given you when you're like he's really helped your business so we talk about something called utilization which is like how well utilized my mm -hmm. time is and we worked out that my business and any content creator business is fee times number of jobs um times how well we are fitting um those jobs into our week equals utilization mm -hmm. which just are you using your time um, to the max and I learned what my max was through essentially just crying so I learned that after four jobs a week I tend to it's too much yeah I, I break down and four jobs a week is amazing and we do tend to max it and I don't know many content creators working mm. th th that many jobs um, but because I'm across TikTok, LTK, YouTube, Instagram and we do honestly like I feel like it sounds like an ad when I'm saying it but Insanity is so good at booking me the best brands and the best partners. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easy in terms of that. But yeah, any more than four. And then we have a kind of um, ideal fee that we look at all the time. I know you spoke about fees in your solo app as mm -hmm. well. I have no idea what other creators' fees are. It's I know, really same. interesting. Do you like, do you do different fees for different brands? Yeah. Same. Yeah, but all the best people do that. Like, I, I think everybody you does. You shouldn't just give out a fee. I think it should just be yeah. a bit of a hmm, and back and forth. People have spoken about this before, but never give a range. Yeah. Don't be like, oh, I work for between 1,000 and 2,000, because the brand will be like, well, we'll have, we'll have yeah. you for 1,000 then. Yeah, because you don't know what their top is. Like, yeah. They might just have a load of money. Yeah, but I think we change fees based on a ton of things. And again, something that we I 
figured out in my strategy was that I have pillars that need to be satisfied in order for me to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, everything from kind of does it make my life easier and happier to it being like an ethical fit and fee and this kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, like obviously different brands have different budgets different deliverables like yeah. some of the fees sound so impressive you're like well hang on let me tell you about the deliverables let yeah. me tell you about the exclusivity they want to use the photo for the next 10 years yeah. on everything that yeah. exists yeah. yeah um which again is a really nice part of being having an agent is that you don't need to get involved in all that kind of stuff yeah I'm excited for that yeah in my life <laughs> yay um so tell me about youtube have you you've not done that as long as you have used no. everything else so how did that come about it's been not like i've got all my really old original videos up there which are mega cringe but as part of almost like rejection therapy i think they should stay yeah it's part of the journey it's measuring the gap i think mm -hmm. is a lovely phrase i always like to use and when i think back to like the modeling and all that kind of stuff i don't go oh that was wrong or whatever i'm just like but look at where you are now just measure the gap um, but yeah, YouTube is a bit of fun and a bit of an experiment. I love it as an outlet to be imperfect, to talk, to just have some long form there that I really feel is like a tonic to the short form, which we are bombarded with. Mm -hmm. um, and a bit like a oh, pendulum. People, it's coming back. People want to exactly, see it. Exactly. Exactly. I was going to say a bit like a pendulum. It swings back and I feel like long form is already more of a thing. Yeah. Relationship building. Um, so many creators on there. I love watching like the Molly Mae vlogs. I just love them. So good. I watch them as well. They're so good, aren't they? I, I know that's really what's made her love. her. I yeah. think if she never did YouTube from coming out of Love Island, yeah. she wouldn't be Molly Mae. Yeah. It's crazy. It's because you get that personal, like what she's having for breakfast, yeah. like her favorite moisturizer. Like it's genuine and it's real and yeah. her inner thoughts. Especially when she is at such a high level to have that um, kind of paired with the realness of everything going on and the kind of the mundane bits of life and all mm. that stuff. We love to see that. It makes her feel more relatable and lovely as a person. People want to support nice people. Yeah. That's the thing. It shows your real personality rather than online. People can be like, oh, I don't know who she really is and what she's really like. Yeah. Um, Are you? How do you feel about YouTube? I don't know. Should I do it? So I did like two videos on YouTube. I want to say last year. It's probably the year before now. Because I was like, I'm going to do YouTube. And then it was Christmas. Yeah. And then I never did it again. Because yeah. it was just Christmas happened. Did it was a break and I never got back into it. Did you try it. to do vlog vlogmas or whatever it's called no i just did too i think because it's always so busy around christmas isn't it there's always things yeah, going on so it's like yeah. the perfect time to film like fun things and then christmas happened january's always a bit like chilling i'm like having a more of a chill january there wasn't it wasn't it's was more working less interesting things to film yeah which i should have just filmed real life now i know but i just got out of it and now i'm like i don't know it's hard to start something new isn't it you, but this is the great thing about you having a manager now. You might have a load of This um, is it. So capacity. I was thinking about it. Yeah. And then um, YouTube takes off and then it pays for the manager. And it's you yeah. kind of become an, an upward spiral there. And it's another place to have ads. Um, and it's another and place. And affiliate links. Yes. Because you're an LTK gal as well. I am. You? But you know what? I've not taken it seriously. You have to. But I do now. Well, people, not people, as serious not as you, enough, I feel like. Not enough people take it seriously. See, this is, we've gotten to this perfectly because this is my next question. <laughs> okay. I feel like you are affluent queen like you are so good at ltk you're you plug it a lot like you've got your girlies on there shopping yeah tell me about how do you first get into ltk tell the anyone listening that's like what the fuck is ltk yeah. i've never heard of it before tell them okay that's a challenge it's so to good do in though. like 30 seconds but um so i met uh, a creator called olivia smith you might mm, follow yes. her like short blonde hair yeah. um she's, she's lovely i met her on another photo shoot which i very nearly didn't say yes to there you go um it was unpaid so <laughs> as most of them are <laughs> i was like D don't care as long as i can put it on the gram <laughs> get them shots yeah pictures of me with lights and stuff um but i met her and we just got chatting on the sofa during a break and she started telling me about ltk and i was like that's weird because they reached out last week but i don't get it mm. and i just said really bluntly to feels her, like, like a pyramid scheme yes it's such an mlm it's not it's not it's totally legit yeah. <laughs> but i said to her um like how much can i ask how much you're making on there and mm. she told me the amount and i was like sold that's what happened to me too really <laughs> with someone else and so word of mouth is, yeah i think they the way me LTK make us to go oh, okay downloading now yeah yeah <laughs> need to start linking things yeah. but i love it it's probably like mm, 
And it's nice to have all your things for your audience. It's perfect because you have all, it's like going into your wardrobe yeah. on an app. It's perfect. And it's there for people that want it. I'm sure there are people that don't want to shop through affiliate links mm-hmm. um, and each to their own, but hopefully I'm not too pushy and it's just, it's there for people. But the thing is, especially because I feel like I'm solving a problem for mid size to plus girls. Like yeah. most of my audience are actually a bit more like a 12, 14, 16. Um, I think that it's harder to shop and find people that you want to have their outfits. And I yeah. have, I, I can't just go into, I was going to say Topshop then. <laughs> I can't just go, I Throw can't back, go into most stores and, and find stuff that actually fits, um, especially on the bottom half. Like I mm. really struggle with bottoms. So yeah. um, and then they're my best sellers on LTK because there are so many people who must feel the same. Mm. Um, but that LTK is such a massive part of my business. I have a great relationship with the managers there. Um, and, uh, that's separate from insanity so yeah. I almost have like my own team at LTK as well and every single woman who I meet there is just amazing like they're they lovely. are they're smart they're switched on they're really um and they encourage you yeah which is nice big time very data driven um I was told when I joined the platform that the people the, the women that are the most successful on there the ones that understand the data and the analytics mm-hmm. and I just let that guide me the whole time to help. it's perfect for you I know, I love it. But it's cool, girly. I didn't realize I was, but I feel like my other half in LTK and social has brought out that side in me. And more and more now we are seeing deeper dives into insights, more insights available as well on all the platforms that can kind of guide us on. Do you just do LTK or do you use any other ones ever? Oh no. Just LTK. Just LTK. Mm -hmm. And I have been approached by others and other creators tell me about others, but I really want to prove my loyalty to LTK as well because um, it's not just the tech platform and the affiliate links that the the tech behind that it's also the management and it's also the collabs so I know in your solo app you were talking about they can actually bring you collabs Mm -hmm. as a management agent would yes and that is a like at some parts in the year 50% of my sort of paid ad collabs on my feed are from LTK yeah amazing really amazing we love you LTK we really do give us more drops (laughs) if you're listening we just talked about you on my podcast yeah what a plug (laughs) what a plug not an ad (laughs) not an ad could have been an ad could have um but yeah I think if you are a creator at any level I think you've got to be on LTK. Absolutely. Because it's nice to get extra income. And also there's TikTok shop now, which is the affiliate link. I don't do it link. at all. Do you not? No. I mean, I, I feel like you dabbled? would. I've tested it a couple of times and it's good. So, it, you know what? I feel like people listening, the thing with TikTok shop, it still feels a bit like not Legit. obvious that it's affiliate links. Oh, you were saying You know, saying like this. when everyone was talking about like the rosemary hair oil, for yeah. example, and it went everywhere. Yeah. So when you do that TikTok shop post, so it, basically if you're a creator, you could go into TikTok shop and it'll show you all the brands and how much commission you're going to get and how much they're selling, who the top earners are. You can literally see it all. Mm. And when it was the rosemary oil, oil era, obviously it does work, but it was the top one. It was the top amount of commission you were going to make. So obviously everyone's talking about rosemary oil, but I feel like the audiences don't know that. They're just like, oh my God, this must be really good. Yeah. Like next level good. Cause every creator. I bought it. Did you buy it? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Every creator is talking about it. Yeah. So, um, but it's cause they were making so much money. And when you do a TikTok shop ad, it comes up saying, do you want your post boosted? So they'll, they'll boost it out to I, more people. I see, I, I don't know this. Yeah, oh, you got it. That's what you'll be on next I, on the affiliates. I, I feel like a lot of that is tapped on there. I agree, that's and why I'm, I don't do it. Cause you wanna really, keep it chic. Yeah, and I, I'm really aware of promoting not But I think now audience. more luxury brands are going to be going on there that's what they say and it's going to be a bit more um less random stuff that's what upsets me as well it'll be like this random makeup brand that you've never heard of and everyone's like i love this bronzer and it's like but do you yeah and and, or is it on tiktok shop and you're making money off of these people you know and a lot of people who haven't necessarily sold to an audience before will do it in a particular way and it's not my style like i'm even wary of calling it selling because to me i'm often just recommending stuff yeah I actually do love I think and you can tell that with you like as much as we're talking about the analytics of it and I don't want people to listen to this and be like oh she just cares about the money or whatever because you are recommending everything you love and Mm. it's very obvious that you are and yes there's now you know you it's your job too but it's you you won't just promote anything yeah and the higher up you get in terms of more 
more jobs, higher fees, whatever it is, the more you can say no to. So actually the higher exactly. up you go, the quality does improve. And it's your job. Like you're not gonna try and ruin your career by recommending something you don't like. It's see-through, I think these days, everyone's so savvy yeah. to it. All the followers are, you know, they see it so much. Yeah. So you're not gonna be a TikTok shopper? Oh, TBC, watch the space. <laughs> it depends if the products are good enough for me and my audience. Like there's a exactly. standard there and we need I'm some, not willing to I absolutely drop agree. the standard. I agree. Um, so you've been very open online about when you had your ectopic pregnancies, mm. which I think is amazing. So talking about boundaries, like how do you, how did you decide to show that with your audience and why did you want to share that um, that you went through? Really good question. And thanks for Thank bringing you. it up because it, I, I, I love talking about it. Um, I don't really talk about anything personal in my life because that's other people. So I don't, I've only just started to call my partner Andy, which his name is, but he's, his face is nowhere. You will not is find not? him online. I've I never that. found him online. He, do, he does not exist, so don't even bother trying. I love that. That's not a challenge. <laughs> you ain't gonna find him. Yeah, and it's a one way door, right? So the moment I do share him, it's out there forever. Um, and everyone knows I'm in a relationship, but it's totally private. And it's just one of the best decisions we've made. No, that's lovely. Really good. Um, but to get back to your question, I don't share other people in any capacity. You won't really see pictures of my friends and tag them. Cause I think you get to a certain level where you have so many followers that people don't want that. Yeah, So I agree. I only tag my friends that also do it as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, or even like bringing a vlogging camera out at dinner. Can you imagine like there's so much yeah. stuff I can't show because that's not the way other people in my life would want it and respect to that. Um, so when this massive health thing did happen to me, mm. I felt like I could share it because I wanted to connect with my audience. Number one, I wanted to say why well, I had I had been AWOL because so I've had two ectopic pregnancies in the past year, but wow. they both happened when I was doing my 30 and 30 challenge. Mm -hmm. So I was posting every single day and then I suddenly just had to mute and stop. Oh, wow. um, and so, yeah, I, and, and the best part about something so awful is I've had so many women reach out to me who've then gone through ectopics after me and have either felt comforted by the content and the fact that this can happen to like people in kind of like more glamorous positions and like it, it's mm -hmm. normal or people who have listened to my YouTube video about it and um, gone then and sought medical advice and potentially saved a rupture and the thing about ectopic pregnancies is most of them are in your fallopian tubes and if the um, embryo grows too much your fallopian tubes um, rupture and then that causes bleeding which is life-threatening yeah um, so it's really scary and it's really important and I've learned so much about it and a bit like my data with Instagram and stuff I needed to know everything medical so like mm -hmm. whilst I won't go into the medical stuff I'm basically an expert on egg topics <laughs> um, and we are trying again and hoping that third time lucky I've got one oh. fallopian tube left I call it my lucky left oh. <laughs> and um, yeah I've just it's been like lovely to share it with people oh, I think it's amazing because you're going to help so many women that may have gone through something and they'll see that and they'll be like oh my gosh me too like you're giving yeah. them confidence to be able to get through something yeah um what's your advice for someone maybe going through something similar my advice to somebody going through what like an ectopic mm -hmm. or um oh, ectopic? any 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 issues whatever you want to say ectopic would be like I listened to my body and it was the most amazing thing ever. So my first ectopic was October 2023 mm -hmm. and I had no signs of pregnancy. Um, I had even had my period, which even doctors asked me, why did you take a pregnancy test if you had your period? And I was like, I don't know. I just felt like something was off. Yeah. Um, I had some like really minor bleeding as well after my period that carried on. And I just decided to do a pregnancy test and it showed as being pregnant. But I was like, do you know what? I think I'm having a really early miscarriage. Went to the EPU, which anyone can go to. It's the early pregnancy unit and sat there. You got to sit there for sort of six, seven, eight hours, eventually wow. got seen got a scan and, and was told it was ectopic learned so much about it and I think um it's so, not sorry. spoken about much it's I not like. really yeah. it's only one in 80 pregnancies so it's not wow. even that common um but there's the ectopic trust is a website which I was told to go to uh, as soon as I found out the news and I'd never had a charity online help so much like wow. they are so thorough um and 
they they say absolutely everything on there. So if you have any symptoms or if you've been through one, you have to go and visit that website because mm. it's spectacular. It's also moderated by doctors, so I have no qualms at like pointing people there. Um, and my NHS doctor told me to go there. That's such a good advice. It's it's really good. But I think that the main thing is like trust your gut. Mm-hmm. That women's is, intuition. It it's is. a thing. It's there, and I know there are many stories about how you have to shout a lot more in a medical um, uh, kind of scene mm-hmm. to get your voice heard. And again, I've definitely learned that. I've gone back for second opinions Especially when I have women's been issues. Right things. Yep, hundred um, percent. I had like residual pain after my ectopic had resolved the first time. And I went back and I was like, something's still not right. Um, they scanned me, they're like, you're absolutely fine. And I was like, something's still not right. Went for a third scan and they found a kind of a walnut sized cyst in my ovary. Mm. And I'm like, how how could you have you missed that? that? Um, their response to that was we were just looking for ectopics so we didn't see it. But you know, ectopics can also be in your ovary. So, yeah. but I felt sometimes like people thought I was a bit crazy or imagining the pain, um, but it was there and it still is there. I still have this weird pain on my really? right side. I know. Um, but yeah, I think trusting your gut, shouting, getting second opinions and where possible. And I know this is a huge privilege, but I did um, go for a private scan as well. Um, and my so my first ectopic was NHS, but my second was all dealt with privately just because I felt like I needed that. Um, that contact and that time yeah. um, with people. So two very different experiences mm. and different outcomes as well. Like my first one just happened to miscarry, which was great at the time. It's like the only time you really want a miscarriage. And then the second time was an operation. Um, but I think, and you'll get this because we're at that age now with fertility stuff going mm-hmm. on. And I know you mentioned that you wanted to get like a fertility, fertility person on the podcast. I yeah. love Dr. Natalie Crawford, by the way. Okay. I found her through the Huberman podcast Mm -hmm. and she's amazing. Mm. Um, So she's kind of, all her advice is really helpful, particularly with TTC, like trying to conceive. Mm -hmm. Um, But just having gone through this massive thing of having these two miscarriages in in a really horrible way, just makes me so able to connect to more women Mm -hmm. about them and what they've gone through, um, which is special in its own way. So special, especially when social media can be often be, you know, you talk about fashion, beauty, it can be yeah, like very frivolous things. Level. Yeah. So being able to say that and connect with your audience on something that's so real is so needed and something we all need a bit of realness in our lives in this yeah. world that we're living in, I feel like. Yeah. Um so it's amazing that you share that. And Thank you. I hope you, Thank you have for talking all about the it. luck in the world with your journey Thank you. We will. You we will. will we will get there. Facts. Yeah. I'm excited to see the journey and the posts when you do and Thank amazing. You. Um so I wanna get into like top threes of things just to like round Love up structures. Because I want to ask you so many questions that I'm going to have to top three it just to get through some I things. Like I rambled this whole time as well, so sorry no, about that. No, you have not. It's been perfect. Also, guys, <laughs> as we've been recording this episode, there's just people dragging things outside. So if the sound is crazy and there's just people opening doors and... It's real, as you said. Yeah, we apologize. Um, okay, so you have fantastic hair. Thanks. As so do you. Not right now. I'm like, I need my hair doing, but thank you. No, stunning, everything. We're all obsessed with your hair. What's your top three hair tips, please? Genetics. I'm going to be very honest about that. Love it. I think that's really important to acknowledge. I've always had thick hair. Um, I have a phenomenal colorist and stylist in uh, Radio Salon at King's Cross. Mm -hmm. You can literally go and ask for the molly. I'm trying to give practical, Stop yeah. The molly. I know that's so I, cute. But I force this on my hairstylist. I'm like, because people will DM me, and I'll be like, "Are you okay?" If people just come here and ask for the molly, <laughs> that's so cute. Um, and he's called Luke Ash, and he's great. Um, I'm trying to give like practical advice here, but third, great hair. Mm, what's my third tip? I think probably leaning into what you already have. Mm -hmm. So I have this new style I'm really liking called my rain hair. And I got a little bit rained on one day and I actually loved the effect. So I used to do the Matilda Jerf blowout Dyson vibe. And I just feel like that's not my look anymore. Mm -hmm. And I prefer this like kind of undone, kind of messy, a bit tussled. 
um Unreal. look so i think experimenting but yeah I, this is this isn't far from my natural hair so mm. leaning into that working with what you got you know love that okay top three social media tips okay again i want to give actionable advice that's actually helpful we so love. number one would be that i grew half a million followers last year from doing my 30 outfits in 30 days mm-hmm. um another tip from my other half I keep just wanting like, to do 30 outfits in 30 days and I'm just haven't done it I need to do it I keep not finding 30 days where I'm like okay I need to order have enough clothes and have enough things you don't need to do it every day though you know that right what do you mean <laughs> you do oh yeah you pre-record yeah <laughs> obviously I'd have to pre-record the whole thing yeah yeah I feel like I'm never home but I think what happened just just post one and go I'm doing this and yeah then suddenly the pressure my husband there. did it actually where he did a week and he was like oh, really? he'd, he'd done like three and then he was oh god I'm, I'm already behind and I was like you should have pre-recorded them all yeah but it's a ton of work but I saw so much that was your thing yeah Mm. so grew from like 250,000 uh January 2023 and then by December it was over 750 wow well I'm at 750 now that's insane yeah and I I haven't grown because I haven't done that intensity so like be intense with your series I would I'd really say that and that you know you could be tech beauty whatever just like be intense with the uploads Um, good advice do 10x the work that other people are doing and you'll see the results um i think another one oh god there's so many i know just ones that come to you social media tips two i think is i always put myself in the shoes of my audience so it's actually not about me and i have like many things a little quote about this which is people don't follow you because of who you are they follow you because of who they are and I think they Great look for themselves quote. in you and you're actually just a vehicle a lot of the time for the outfits and the way people feel and all that sort of stuff is weirdly you're not the subject so I think I will always try and put myself into my shoppers slash audiences shoes and Love. that kind of leads on to the third one which is just be creating a value add in every single circumstance like how are you making it better and I think hooks are super important as well I know it's really boring but you can often analyze your own self and how people will receive it by how you scroll through your feed like last last time you were stopped by something what made you stop mm-hmm. um and I have like a little folder on TikTok in fact because I love consuming TikTok content and it's called content I can copy mm-hmm. and every single time I see a video I like it goes in that folder so that I have it's both a inspo but be a kind of a backlog of things to do when paid ads are a little bit quieter I have my organic there to go back to great advice I think that's helpful you're so good thank you top three beauty tips oh my god this is my last top three don't worry then we've <laughs> got the final I'm question very good at beauty, you are you joking you're so good at beauty I think you should do it have you got top three beauty tips no I would this love is about to know you. your you're my muse okay, okay. <laughs> um I I love fake tan Oh, that uh, that would probably be mad, actually. I know. You just feel like a different person, don't you, when you tan? You do, and I, it's such a waste of my time. I've tried to wean myself off. Don't, well, even, last night I only tanned my arms and my and my neck because I'm like, it's fine. You can do that in winter, mm. and I absolutely love it. I'm Heaven. a top half tanner as well. I look like a Jersey cow most of winter. <laughs> just like no one's gonna brown. see it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love tanning. Beauty tips. Oh my You've god. You've got great skin. Thank you. Uh, Give me a skin tip. Skin tip is simplicity. I also, and this isn't an ad, but skin, skin and, and me. me. Skin and me. You love me. skin and me. Do you like skin and me? I do like skin and me. I, I haven't used them in skin. ages though. Yeah. But a few of my friends have said that. Was the It's it's the best and cheapest way to access mm. um And it just gets retinol. To, goes to your door, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, I used to be, have tretinoin in mine, which was actually solved like, all my blemish like yeah. I'd say 90% of, of it so good um they are really good mm. but I think a simple skincare routine and often that means not glamorous not pretty not fragrance products but just simple there I actually Agreed. met Dr Sam Bunting do you know her from no. Dr Sam's like she's the dermatologist like her like books were filled I had to beg to go see her Stop. she's got it's the white products with the red writing oh yeah no you I do know you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a girl called Natalie O'Neill who I love following on TikTok and she's amazing for skincare advice mm-hmm. and it's always pretty much always accessible affordable stuff as well but um another beauty tip you don't have to do three if you don't want to <laughs> 
no <laughs> it's the thinking face for me <laughs> do that like slow zoom with the ticking clock <laughs> Yeah, can you have you got a beauty tip for us? Because you are you are the most beautiful. It's funny. We, stop. I actually don't now. Now, when you get put on the spot for the, certain things, it's really hard. So now I feel like a bad person. Um, are your it, maybe are your brows natural? Yeah, oh, my brows are a mess right now. So genetics. yours are amazing. There is a girl. I've seen you tag her. Holly, my friend also goes to her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're I'm, amazing. I'm accessing like the little black book that the influencers okay. have. We all I'm need Holly. These people, Holly. Um, oh, I always forget her last name. This is so silly. Holly we'll with put, an IE. We can put her Instagram in the in the show notes. I think it's Holly, not Holly Brooks. That's so annoying. Whoa. She'll kill me. <laughs> but when you know people, you just call them by the first name, don't you? Yeah. You don't know their Instagram. You also don't want to give away their details because you want them to get too booked up. Yeah, we don't want that. I should it's have a, a third beauty tip for you. Though. That's so silly. No, that was the third one, your brows. Oh, your brows. Your brows. Your brows. <laughs> your brows. Okay, final question because I could chat on with you forever and ever. But who is your muse and why? I ask everybody this. I prepped for this one because I, was, I, re- I don't have one person that I kind of like idolize I will have different people who kind of come into my life or my feed and I will have something that I'm fixating on at the time where I feel like they're super applicable so like when I was in my kind of productivity era it was Ali Abdul he was my muse I don't know if you know him but he like you you know him (laughs) he's like a bit of a guy follow more than a girl follow um but when I was kind of I guess like shelling out my business model and how it all works I really needed to hear a lot of what he had to say and all his advice and then um recently Alison Bornstein is like my style oh yeah she's so cool she's so cool um I've just started reading her style book as well but I really want to learn a little bit more about style theory and to bring that into mid-size styling Mm -hmm. and share that with my audience for as much of that like value add as possible because I actually really don't feel like I know a lot about styling um And then, who else do I really like? Um, Grace Beverly, I know it's cringe, but like she, I don't even know if she really fully realizes it, but she definitely did launch my career without knowing through that photo shoot. Um, And she's someone who just, I kind of- She feels, I feel she's very analytical and data driven and- yeah super intelligent. and I feel like she's a hustler like she works oh yeah very hard and she deserves could never be me no couldn't no I'm gonna stay over here in my influencer yeah. corner thank you very much I'm um, too lazy but yeah it's just it depends on the little thing that I'm going through at that time in my life who is who then, you draw inspiration yeah, from Dr Natalie Crawford she was like my fertility muse and like continues to be so mm. just those little people and that's a great part of being online is that you and not even just from a creator point of view where we can access people quite easily it's more just like the sharing of knowledge so that that's what's amazing about the internet isn't it It these days we can get so much knowledge just at the click of a finger and yeah pick and choose exactly what you want um and so yeah that will my muse will change as i go forward and they're often you know yeah. maybe not who you would assume at yeah. the time but grateful for the fact those people are creating that content that I can then sort of bring into my life well thank you for being my muse today thank you for having me you're joking it's been so much fun so fun yeah, I could talk so to you good. all you're day you're so good at this though am I you really are <gasps> honestly you ask the right questions you ask them in the right way oh thank you so I, much I can't speak like this unless you ask me this honestly <gasps> guys stop it bringing it out of <laughs> Love you. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.